peeps, we are locking down the truth with Marcy Locke and the amazing, you guys know who this is, because he's a like giant, Garrett Gunnarsson, which is one of my besties and my favorite people. So the reason I, I pulled Garrett into this, I was like, Garrett, like we get to go down on this, because the reason why he is one of my mentors, we get to go down, see the sexual, <laughs> I, I, the sexual I saw judge. mixed faces as he's filming. <laughs> there's, there's more camera shit I told going on. You, I will have the sexual jokes hit into my head for all of you guys. So the reason that we're doing this is because I had someone that had, you know, showed a video with Gary Vaynerchuk talking about sacrifice and how, you know, to get and achieve any goal and to be successful, you are going to have to sacrifice and settle and basically go only after that for four to five years. And they said, Mars, what do you think about this? Because that is exactly opposite of what I choose. So I brought like the man that lives it himself. This is why he's one of my mentors and I adore him is because he lives in the same belief system I do and that you can have it all. You ready to go off? Yeah, so look, when I, it was 2006 and I get this phone call early one morning. I pick up the phone. It's so early I do a thing called the power hour, as you know. Get up, do exercise, some education and it filled with my expertise and then a little personal enlightenment which would like be meditation for me. And the phone's ringing my home phone. I don't even know my home phone number, so it's like confusing almost. So I pick up the phone. It's one of my business partners. And he says, hey, our company plane crashed into Utah Lake and our partners died. And I was like, whoa, these guys were 35 years old. Yeah. So imagine if they believed this if life was all about sacrifice. These were the guys that were catalysts for me, first and foremost, that they lived wealthy. They were prepared for their financial future, but they took care of themselves today. They took time off. And the bigger the vision you have, the more time you need to take away to relax, to rejuvenate, because you're your greatest asset, not a stock, not a bond, not even your business. And so if you get worn down, which when they died, I actually abandoned those principles for four months. I gained 22 pounds, I got so exhausted, and my wife and I were driving, and we had all the things that looked like wealth, because we're driving in our Bentley, going to Thanksgiving dinner two hours away, and you know what, she just turns to me, and she's telling me, hey, you're an extraordinary radio show host, an extraordinary speaker, extraordinary businessman. But then she looks back at my one-year-old, looks back at me, and says, but you're just an ordinary husband and father. And what had happened is I had adopted this belief that you can't have it all, that you had to have these trade-offs. You couldn't be amazing at business and be healthy, and at the same time, be a good husband and father and go to, on family trips because when you're away, you're away from your business. But what I found was when I was away, my business had a chance to mature, people had a chance to own what they did and I wasn't just delegating tasks, I was letting people own their roles and kind of really grow into what they were doing. And so for four months I kind of faded until my wife has this conversation that confronts me. Yep. And then what happened was I said, I'm gonna shut everything down as far as no email, no taking phone calls, I'm just telling the whole team, Figure it out, I need to take a break, I need to spend time with my family. So what happens is all of a sudden I'm spending time with my son, I'm spending time with my wife. I start getting this energy, right? Yep. And all of a sudden something I've been working on for two years, which was my book, Killing Sacred Cows, I'd only got 72 pages in because I was too busy, yep. was my story. All of a sudden they go to bed, I still was vibrant with energy because I was recharged. And I wrote the thing in 30 days. And from that, I hit this kind of like portal to genius where all of a sudden I was like, I feel re re revived, renewed, I'm taking care of myself. I built out a program, Freedom Fast Track, from December of 06 to April of 07. I presented at a program called Strategic Coach where I showed people at lunch what I had built and they said, what did that take you, eight, nine years? I'm like, it took me four months. Yep. Why? Because I had different fire. energy vibration. Yes. And it wasn't about being perfectly balanced, it was about being present and being in depth. So all of a sudden, I could be an extraordinary husband, I could be an extraordinary father, I could be great at business, because I gave up this belief that you can't have it all. I thought that was just bullshit personal development speak from stage, and because that was my belief, then I lived into that, thinking it was all about sacrifice and hard work. But you know, I had to think back, what if my partners had said it's all about sacrifice? But Les, when he died, just a month before, said, I love my life, I can't imagine it being any better. We'd have team retreats, he'd be throwing water balloons at the team, they'd be up talking all night, they'd be like just having the time of their life. He was always goofing around. He went and bought the car that he loved, drove it fast, they'd take vacations to Hawaii, they would get a photographer to take him on the beach, and at first when I was young I'd be like, that's a waste of money. But if you don't utilize your money on yourself, if you don't create the conditions to do the things that you love, then you get you get hosed with those limiting beliefs. So you gotta check that and say, look, 
you can accomplish so much more if you're willing to give up the things that are really aren't that powerful, especially those beliefs, but even those tasks that are beneath you at this point, what you hate doing, but you're sacrificing to do, other people actually love. You just can't be a miser and a cheapskate. You have to invest in those people to free up your time to be the best version of who you are. Yeah, and let's talk about like, so it's the energy behind it, right? Like which right. you're hitting on. So there's fear and faith energy. When you're doing everything out of fear, see it's like I have to, I should, you're drained, there's no energy, you can't, you know, so it's like imagine no wonder people the other day they were like how have you created so much in such a short period of time and they think no things are a process they take time well he just described to you how when you're in actually taking care of 30 yourself, days and four months two of the yeah, biggest for you, i mean your book is that right. book is huge new york times bestseller right? right and it's like because you're so fulfilled you can create so much higher in such higher degree and we were in a car with a, you know a couple yesterday that was talking about they make bank they make yeah. millions multi-millionaires and they're he's like i just you know someday 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 I just you know like right now like to make money you gotta work, do this. work hard because you don't know how long it's gonna last we're which is like, the belief mm, system yeah that's not true for us and that's not what we choose in fact it's opposite when you feel awesome you're in that you know right. and, and so something that we were taking note of is even though if this is the choice of how Gary Vaynerchuk chooses to do it which 99% of entrepreneurs are choosing in on because this message is being shared that that's how it's supposed to be just expect you got it. We're not saying don't take action. We, we produce and manifest like mother. Speed of implementation, be hardcore about it, get it done. But also, like, think about it. If you planned a vacation, a trip that you was this dream trip, you would get really strategic about what you're going to do and not do leading up to that. Yeah. And the problem is, everybody thinks they have to do things they don't have to do anymore. You have to really do an inventory and check yourself. Is it really worth it? Like, what can you give up and still be better off? And that's what people have a hard time doing. Like, yeah. oh, only I can do paperwork. Are you kidding me? I haven't touched paperwork in a long time. Or, oh, you know, it's like yeah. this control freak. But look, you either pay now or you pay later. And you can do the things that are hard, easy, or easy, hard. Yeah. Easy is I'll just work, 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 neglect my family. But it gets hard when all of a sudden your, your kids are on drugs because you didn't that's show them love. Yeah. Or because they don't feel connected to you. They don't feel worthy. And all of a sudden you're trying to win that back or yeah. you're trying to handle that yeah. when it's hard and you're, you're in rehab and yeah. you're spending all this money on it and you're starting to feel all this guilt. Like yeah. you shouldn't be guilty when you're doing one thing and not doing the other. Yeah, it's we, about we, what do you want to do? We're talking about how entrepreneurs not, it's like in the 90 percentile of their children end up abusing drugs or alcohol and using something outside because they're seeking so desperately that connection hence why both of us we do date nights with our kids and you know you do date right. night with your wife etc because that is just as much priority and what i love I, at one of his events he had said you know his intention was to be the world's greatest romantic husband and so his relationship with his wife is just as much a priority as his business planning and implementation and so here if we say someone that is choosing the same level to success like Gary Vaynerchuk the, you might win you were saying this the movie award you might win like oh great so you're awesome in everybody's People eyes that everybody you don't, don't know, know love you love you <laughs> but your family that's closest to you doesn't have that kind of relationship with you so it is a choice it's definitely a choice in so so I don't really know Gary. I know he works really hard and he has yeah. a really successful business, but all I know is this one statement of you have to sacrifice. And I just think that that is a belief system that's going to make you believe that you have to sacrifice. Yeah. So it's level of worth. We were actually talking about on the way over of how we've up levels where, you know, it's like I'm taking on million dollar clients and you're, you're saying where people were like, well, I only meet with you at 8 p.m. And you're like, listen, would you go to the doctor if he only said you can only meet at 8 p.m.? If your right. finances are not enough of a priority for you, that you can't I have to be worthy enough open. to be able to be exactly. met with between nine and five. So that's your level of worth. So just like you're being a, a bitch to circumstance, a bitch to clients, a bitch to your business, that's you saying I'm not worthy enough to have the life and the balance and the love for myself that I need uh, that I desire so money is a reflection of how much value you're creating for the world and how much you love yourself he might be creating a shit ton of value for the world and I, I can only imagine what he or these kind of influencers could be creating look, for the world if they were operating full capacity. Look, when I was in my 20s people would say what are your hobbies I'm like I own a business or what do you do I, I was so wrapped up in it but in 2012 when I said I'm gonna be a premier romantic and an extraordinary husband I invested so much in that relationship that you know what my wife is infinitely more supportive there isn't yes. guilt there isn't like there frustration when I'm leaving so I'm not we're not in that fight we're not in that you know like lack of support she's like hey you, okay is this important let's do it and then we just created structure it's like okay if I'm gone more than four nights in a month I'm taking a day off during the week where we can go do a date day if I'm you know gone more than a certain amount of time 
we're gonna do an extra time with the kids because my kids start acting differently when I don't spend time with them. They don't feel as important if I'm not present with them. So it's an investment in people, it's an investment in relationships, an investment in experiences, and it's harmony. There is no such thing as balance. Right now, I'm out of town, not around my family, but when I, I fly home early tomorrow, I'm gonna make sure I'm present with them. We're gonna do some killer. I've already got a great date night plan with my wife tomorrow. And then on Sunday, I'm taking the kids to a Six Flags type thing that is close to us, and we're just gonna have a, a great day. So it's about that depth, it's about that focus, it's about that presence. But at the same time, I always have something cool to look forward to with my family. So they know sometimes there's busy times, but it's like, okay, my wife and I have a killer New York trip plan, you know, with the kids. We've got this thing Sunday that's planned, so I always have something the on the books. Yeah, right? we're yeah. taking you're taking your son, I'm my taking oldest, my eldest son, and, and we're going to you know Jim and Brian's board board meetings in Retreat. Florida, where we're going to be surfing and then hanging Play out with, with our kids, kids yeah. to really bond with them. Yeah. And you know, I Columbia, <laughs> right? And so there's like all these there's all these kind of cool things that can be done. It's just a matter of what you want to create. Mm -hmm. I know that I believed with a limiting mindset in the past or a limited mindset because that's how I lived until I was confronted, fortunately, by my wife that she had the courage to tell me that I was ordinary. And I said, that's right, why am I extraordinary in these other areas? And all I did was extract in those areas. I said, why am I being extraordinary in business right now? Well, I'm reading books, I have mentors, I do weekly meetings, I have a clear vision, I spend time with other people who are great in business. I'm like, well, who am I spending time with that are amazing in their marriage? Yep. What books am I reading to have a great marriage? What people am I paying to help me integrate a better system to be an extraordinary husband? Like, I just started doing the very same things, and, and guess what happened? you apply the same thing with your body, you apply yeah. your same thing with everything. So again, it's a choice. Yeah, and we all have our own formula, we have our own system of success, and our own values, but we don't have to settle. But if our whole vision is survival, that's our best case scenario. Yep. If our vision is extraordinary, that having it all, then guess what shows up in our life? It's yeah. just because that's what we set out to do. You were using a lot of like quotes on work equals exhaustion and this and that and just like, you know, it goes on and on and on. If anything, what we wanted to present for you guys is two people who are living it in a different way. That like, you know, Garrett is highly, highly amazing, successful, you know, sharing so much value for the world and it does not come at the cost of other areas of his life. And the more, it, so it's choice. So when you come down to that and you believe, okay, so I would love that. How do I learn from the people that do that to allow me to have that and experience success being all aspects of your life? Yep, and I just look at this, like, I'm definitely not perfect, but it's always progress and it's always work, but it's, it's um, course correction instead of force correction. Bankruptcy is a force correction because we ignore what's going on in the world, or we have a lack of vision, or we don't know, you know, our problems become bigger than our vision, or divorce can be a forced correction. So I'm constantly going, okay, can I make small adjustments along the way as I'm iterating rather than, oh shit, it hit the fan, I didn't think about that, I didn't create that in my life because I believed in sacrifice and delaying and deferring. And then you're dead. Yeah, and then you're right. dead. Like my, my yeah. partners, I felt so much more ease knowing that. One of their widows said, I feel like we've lived a lifetime in the last 18 months. You know, it, I mean, it's like you just have a different piece. And then one of the, my partners that died said this, he said, it's not how long you're here, it's what you do while you're here. Yeah. And how profound for him. Yeah, that's what, if I die tomorrow, my life is awesome. Yeah. And that's so. the kind of life you want to live. So you got a couple people saying, right. it's choice, choose it. This is Marcy Locke and Garrett Gunderson reminding you, power choice is yours, choose your best life. Fuck. And